in 2009, we got this approach out of the blue from Qatar saying, will you come to have a briefing for this competition? We're now 13 years later and the tournament's about to happen and the best players in the world and the teams are all going to come together and three billion eyes are going to be on that tournament and the final will be played in a stadium we designed. It's hard to believe that time has flown so quickly. We were approached in 2009 when Qatar had aspirations to bid for the World Cup and they invited us to take part in a competition to design the World Cup venue. We won that competition. Then in 2013 the location of the site changed. It was relocated into La Salle City. We then continued to develop the design through from concept through to detailed design. Our starting position was really to create a design that was intimate, immersive, uh, atmosphere for both the players and the spectators, creating a dynamic relationship between the pitch and the seating. Well, the project was being developed in advance of the sale city, so it will become a kind of a very simple form that will become a signature for the tournament, but also respond to the climate of Qatar. Since the earliest forms of settlement in, in Qatar, the climate itself ha has influenced it, it, its architecture. And in fact, the extreme weather kind of made the building inward looking and be fairly monolithic. The form of the stadium it is monolithic, it is inward looking, which is something that um, lent itself well for a stadium infrastructure anyway. That's why we then embrace this and a designed stadium that was fairly, fairly solid around the envelope, but then opens up with a fantastic experience inside it. The exercise of designing the skin was an exercise in almost of sculpting light. In this environment, even, even a very small opening can give us quite a lot of daylight, so we had to balance the amount of daylight that we would let into the concourse spaces with enough daylight to then be able to operate within. So that's why striking the balance was an interesting exercise. So we looked for materials that we could achieve the gold effect in a cost-effective, sustainable way. Therefore, in the end, it's a kind of gold anodized finish. And because of that, it actually catches the light from kind of the sunlight as the sun moves around and it glistens in the sunlight. For us, the, the kind of spectacle of the event was the primary driver. What we did was we looked at the relationship between the pitch and the fans sitting in the seats to come up with the best possible configuration so it feels like you're there, part of a huge crowd watching this very special moment. We wanted the relationship so the players could also see everybody in the crowd because they're drawing off, thriving off the same atmosphere to create this fantastic relationship. Qatar created its own sustainability accreditation, GSAS five star rating that we were able to achieve for the tournament. The biggest challenge was obviously create a venue that could host a major sporting event in extreme weather conditions. We worked very closely with Arabs who were our engineers to kind of model the actual climate condition, taking advantage of the roof design and the external skin design to come up with the optimal configuration to test the stadium at different times of the year. 
um, so that we could we could ensure that the solution uh, worked. And really, the big ideas were as well as the roof structure that Doretta has talked about, the external envelope, the size of the apertures, the amount of daylight that came through. You have to minimise the amount of internal lighting because you work on the natural environment externally. And working with the historic techniques that they use in the region um, to design a building that will work in that extreme environment. Yeah, I mean, sustainability was, was in our minds since, since the very beginning. Obviously, it is very challenging to design an open air, air venue in, in a climate like this, but uh, we've used basic design principles on how to design a building in, 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 in this climate to make sure that we could minimize energy consumptions and at the same time develop the experience. The cooling system really is a low velocity uh, displacement system, ventilation system where the cooling is um, pushed out through jet nozzles under the seats itself and in effect what happens is following the profile of the seats you get a layer of cool that is literally the same as a person stood in the seat and that low level cool stays next to the seats and then in effect the roof is designed so that the wind disturbance is minimised inside the seating bowl itself so it acts as a kind of a thermal plug which means that the coolth can sit where it's required by the concourses and the seats to provide the coolth for not only the fans but also the players themselves. This is one of the largest cable net roofs built to date is 307 meters in, in diameter. The shape itself as a Pringle shape um, follows the shape of the bowl and it perfectly integrates with the facade leaving no, no gaps. The way it works is literally it's a spoke wheel system. It has an external compression ring and then an internal tension ring which is exactly where the, where the oculus is and that allows all the forces to interact with each other, making the structural form very lightweight. So it only needs to rest on the perimeter supports, which are these V-shaped columns that you can, you can see in the models, and they also then generate the diagrid for the facade. The roof itself has several functions. Obviously, it has to shade the spectators, but at the same time allow enough daylight in to, to let the grass grow. It was quite a task to calibrate the right amount of daylight that could work for both and the ETFE allowed us to achieve that. It's you know, light transmittal properties allow to do both. Pretty amazing that in 2009 we got this approach out of the blue from Qatar saying will you come to have a briefing for this competition and we went there they hosted England v Brazil as a, as a friendly and every single tall building in there had full 20 storey high images of the players that would participate in the event and that was in 2009. We're now 13 years later and the tournament's about to happen and the best players in the world and the teams are all going to come together and three billion eyes are going to be on that tournament and the final will be played in a stadium we designed. It's hard to believe that time has flown so quickly. And also throughout the process, we've, we've met a lot of people I mean, the client had a, the Supreme Committee had a fantastic team, uh, a big team. And what was nice to see it throughout the process, the, 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 the love that everybody had for the sport itself. So to see that commitment by all the parties in, involved was great. I mean, we're sports lovers ourselves, but uh, it was great to see. It was almost like literally everybody was working towards that common goal. In many ways, we hope that that's still to be defined because we've designed a venue that is kind of flexible for many post-tournament uses. You know, the seating bowl can be reconfigured to receive a number of different mixed uses after the tournament. And its relationship between the stadium, La Salle uh, City and how the two come together, there are many different solutions being um, looked at. It, it is the first World Cup in, in the region, so they are setting a precedent for, for all 
others to come in the same environment. So it, it's got a big role to play in, in uh, taking the sports even further than, than it was before and most importantly to include even more people than before. We're delighted to have played a part in realising the host nation's vision to deliver a world-class tournament final in such a unique setting. And we hope our very simple, symbolic form will stand the test of time.